Good afternoon all. Uh, this afternoon I thought I'd build this kit. It's a little um, electronic frequency counter and also crystal tester. Let's uh, get everything out of the bag. Uh, so we've got a printed circuit board here in a rather fetching red colour. Very well marked up. Uh, all the components are marked, all the values are marked on there so that should be fairly straightforward. Uh, we've got some LED displays. These are single digit, seven segment or eight segment if you include the decimal points and resistors uh, and all these other bits. Socket for the PIC microcontroller. Have a look at the number of that in a moment. Uh, there's a crystal for the PIC. There's some little uh, turned pin test point sockets. There's a variable capacitor there, probably to tune the clock of the PIC so that you can uh, adjust this to get a very precise frequency measurement. Let's get closer in on that PCB. Right, so it's a frequency counter and crystal tester. Um, it has five of these single digit seven segment displays. Uh, it's based on a PIC 16F628. There's a 20 megahertz crystal here, which is driving the PIC and it has a slightly tunable frequency because one of the load capacitors, one is fixed at 22 PUF, the other one is this adjustable capacitor. Wouldn't surprise me if that's uh, 50 PUF adjustable so that we can tweak that to about halfway through that range. Uh, some more 22 PUF capacitors here, probably used in conjunction with this crystal. This is the uh, place where you put the crystal under test. Uh, there's a switch there, not sure what that does. Oh, I think it switches between different ranges. So it probably moves the decimal point for different frequency ranges. And there's a little mini connector here. Uh, I don't think it's 2.1 mil, I think it's the smaller one, where you can put uh, anything from 5 to 9 volts in to drive this unit. So uh, even despite the fact that there are no instructions, I think this should go together pretty easily. So uh, I'm just warming up the soldering iron and today I thought I'd use the blue sponge with the pentagonal hole. Now people do occasionally ask me what this iron is, so here it is, it's an Antex CS18 230 volts, 18 watts and uh, made in England. Wow! Uh, so I'm going to use some 6040 or it might even be uh, 6337, I think it's 6040. Uh, tin lead solder. This has a flux core, so it applies flux as the solder melts. Uh, solder with lead in it, of course, is not permitted uh, for use in commercial products, but uh, if you're just knocking up your own little gadget from a kit, then uh, it's perfectly legal to use lead. And uh, I actually asked my doctor to test my lead levels because I seem to remember as a child chewing on this stuff and the doctor said no you're absolutely fine. Now I've been caught out by these horrible four band resistors before. I actually had a resistor which if you read it one way was 120 ohms I think it was and if you read it the other way it was just something entirely different. I don't see the point of having a colour code on a resistor if it's ambiguous, if it can read two different values by reading from two ends. Yes, I know that there's supposed to be an extra little gap between the uh, multiplier and the, hmm, what would it be, the uh, tolerance band, but these don't seem to have that. So I'm going to test them. I mean, these are almost certainly these 1K resistors, uh, which in four band is brown, black, black, brown, I think it is. But uh, I'm going to put them on the component tester anyway, just to save any embarrassment. Right, so I've put the resistor in really any two holes in this socket, as long as you don't do what I just did and put it between one and one, because then it's uh, both legs are connected to the same test point. So I've now moved it slightly and it's connected between one there and two there. So that should work if I run a test on that. Let's see what it says. My battery is okay for the moment. Oh, it's a resistor and it's a thousand and one ohms. That's fantastic. That's very close to 1K. Uh, of course, this test is not likely to be massively accurate, but yes, that's a 1K resistor. And uh, the color code of that 
if I can get it suitably lit, appears to be brown, black, black, brown, and I'm reading from the left. Brown, black, black, brown, and then another brown. So that's uh, starting from the left, one, zero, zero, so that's a hundred. Uh, the next brown is the multiplier, so it's multiplied by 10 to the power of one, which is 10. So multiply 100 by 10, we get 1,000, and then the brown, I don't know why I'm wobbling around so much, on the right is a 1% uh, temperature, no, not temperature, it's a 1% tolerance. So this can be 1% high or 1% low. Now, how do you hold the components in the board while you flip them over and solder them and not get that effect where they drop out? Well, sometimes, if you're lucky, you can bend them so that they're a moderately tight fit in the hole. Uh, I haven't got lucky with this one. That one is completely loose. So I'll probably use blue tack on that one. Uh, right, so a big blob of blue tack holding that in. Uh, it's nice and square. Yes, I know you're shouting at me saying, don't solder one, solder them all at the same time. I will on the subsequent resistors, but let's just get this one in uh, now. Now these are three plated holes, so they're going to suck in quite a bit of solder until we build up our little uh, mountain shaped uh, meniscus, is it, on this side. So feeding a reasonable amount of solder in. Oh, that one could probably do with a little bit more. And as I say, the shape of the solder should not be blobby. It should be uh, nice and svelte and mountain shaped, so fat at the bottom, thin at the top. Let's cut that. All right, cutting that and, uh, oh, what's that stuck to my cutters? And uh, just putting my finger over the wire so it doesn't fly across the room because bits of wire flying across the room and landing in some of your other projects can cause trouble. Uh, yeah, keep these, drop them into a little bucket of cutoffs because uh, these can be quite handy for making little wire links when you're breadboarding your next circuit. The only downside with blue tack is that when it gets hot it tends to um, pull away and leave a residue. It hasn't here because I've given it plenty of time to cool down, but you can just pick that off by just dabbing it with the blue tack to get that off. So for the remainder of these uh, 1K resistors, I'm going to try and use a slightly different technique for holding them in the holes. And uh, that is that I'm going to slightly bend a, a slightly softer radius on these pins by not bending them too aggressively. So that should fit a little bit tighter in the hole. Let's see how well I did. Okay, so that's got a bit of tension on it. And uh, yeah, that tension was maintained all the way down. So that's actually holding itself in. That's not uh, falling out. So if I put them all in like that and then just lay it down on the mat, I should be able to solder these. Now, are you nerdy enough to want to have all your resistors the same way round? I used to be when I was younger. Now I'm not so bothered. And particularly with these uh, four band resistors, I think the color code is so useless that uh, actually I can happily ignore ones that are the wrong way around. So I'm not going to worry about it. Right, that's got all these 1K resistors in. Uh, they're not soldered yet. And if I lay that board down on the ground, it's kind of rocking a bit. So they're not held in terribly well. So. What I'm going to do is put that 10k in up at the other end just so that it's kind of balanced and will sit down on my mat. So now I need to identify a 10k resistor. So I'm pretty sure it's these two, brown, black, black, red. So brown, black is the 10, uh, the black is another zero and the red is two more zeros. So yes, that's 10k, but I will just check them in the component tester. Okay, check that one out. And it's 9,704 ohms. It's a bit low, but uh, yeah, essentially that's a 10K resistor. Yeah, it's still not lying completely flat. So maybe I'll take another 10K resistor and just shove it in these holes at the top here, just so that this sits flat on my mat. Uh, I just got to remember not to solder that resistor up there because that's in holes which the displays need. 
but I'll solder all these others. So this was the 10k sitting up at one end. Ah, well now that's rocking a bit, which isn't ideal. So maybe I'll just put some blue tack uh, legs on this so it sits still. I think this big button of blue tack just sitting in the middle should do it. Yeah, that seems to have anchored it down reasonably well. So now I'll just solder all these other resistors. I can probably only get to these front pins initially. Oops. And then I'll cut them off or possibly turn the board around. Yeah, that's proving tricky. Getting my solder around the other legs. But it's not going too bad. Haven't quite got my nice meniscus, my little mountains. So I'll just add a bit of solder, I think, to these. Build my mountains up so that they look how I want them to look. And chop all these uh, legs off. Again, making sure they don't fly across the room and in through the grill of a power supply or something like that and blow it sky high right three more resistors to go in uh, a 10k here a 1k here and a 100k here so let's get those in and uh, once all the resistors are in i'll probably move on to uh, other low profile components like the diodes but let's get the resistors done first. Okay, diodes. Now this section here is marked 4148 times three. Uh, these of course are 1N 4148 diodes and there's another one over there. The solid mark there uh, indicates the solid bar on these. Now that's the pointy end, so that's the cathode. So we want them cathode to where this bar is. So let's get those in now. Now, how do you remember that the pointy end of a diode is the cathode? Well, I never could until recently. I just never knew which end of a diode was which. So I had to come up with a stupid uh, sort of mnemonic and I've come up with pointer cath, uh, not an, on the basis that cath, I suppose, is more attractive than an, you would point at cath. And you wouldn't point at Anne. Silly, isn't it? But that's how I remember it. Right, that's all the low profile components done. Uh, so what's left now are components of varying different profile heights. So I think I'll do the capacitors next. I think I'll do these uh, resin dipped ceramic, multi-layer ceramics. So let's get those in. Right, these are marked um, with these multiplier numbers. So we've got a 104 there. Well, there's the 104 up there. And we've got a 102 here. There's the 102. So 104 is 100N because N is the three zeros at the end. So 100N, 104, and 1N is 102. So it's one, zero, two more zeros. So it's a thousand picofarads one nanofarad, one nanofarad, 100 nanofarads. Let's just get them in. Uh, right, there they are soldered. Now, earlier I was banging on about um, getting this sort of little mountain-shaped meniscus of solder, but it's just occurred to me that that's really more appropriate for single-sided boards. With these double-sided boards and the plated through holes, uh, there's solder all the way through the board, so you don't really need that much solder built up on the uh, pad on the bottom side. I mean the bottom side and the top side are really equivalent with a plated through hole. So um, yeah you can have a fairly flat solder joint and it's just as fine. I thought I'd better mention that because um, I was thinking single-sided when I said that. Right let's take the uh, blue tack off there. Now we have these three uh, 22 puff capacitors and uh, yeah, there are three points there, 22 puff, 22 puff, these two, and one of the uh, load, uh, load capacitors for um, the 20 meg crystal. Uh, 22 puff, of course, means 22 picofarads, PF. I say puff, some people say puff. I prefer puff. Uh, so the pitch on these capacitors doesn't really match terribly well 
the pitch of the holes on the board so on the underside the legs are splayed wide open so uh, those are going to hold themselves in reasonably well so I don't think I need any blue tack there let's get them soldered right well now the lights going uh, it being winter so I think I'll stop here make this a two-part video and uh, continue with this tomorrow uh, what have we got left to go in a few bits and bobs here the displays and the microcontroller so not too much more to go in then we can power it up and see if it works so for the moment uh, cheerio